Hi guys, today we're looking at protocols and connectors. USB needs little introduction of course, but what if you get some old keyboard with a weird connector and you don't know what to do? So let's go through some common connectors and the languages they speak called protocols. Before USB, the main connector was PS2. It was the connector at the time. It was introduced by the IBM Model M, which is the most famous PS2 keyboard. Unless your computer has a PS2 port on it, which looks like this, it probably won't understand the PS2 protocol. That means that a simple $1 adapter like this will do jack shit for you. What this does is change the shape of the connector, but the signal is still encoded in PS2, which the computer can't understand. In that case, or in case your PS2 port doesn't supply enough power to the keyboard, you'll need to use an active converter. The big difference between an active converter and an adapter, which is passive, is that the converter has a chip in it which translates PS2 to USB. They come in various shapes and sizes, but some look just like passive adapters, so make sure you read the description and reviews well so you know it's actually a converter. Apple keyboards at the time used a connector that looks vaguely like it, but it only has four pins, not six. This is called an ADB connector. This needs an active converter as well. You can get them commercially, most famously the Griffin iMate, but these are really expensive. If you're good with electronics, it might be better to solder and program your own. There's instructions online on how to do this. Before PS2 came along, the standard was AT, which used a much bigger 5-pin DIN plug. The AT protocol is more or less the same as PS2, so if you have a PS2 port, you should be able to run AT keyboards with just a simple passive adapter like this. They cost hardly anything. If you only have USB, you can use an adapter to neck it down to PS2, and then use an active converter to translate that to USB. Even earlier than AT is the XT protocol. Keyboards with this protocol are generally easy to recognize because of their utterly bizarre layout. They use the same connector as AT keyboards, a 5-pin DIN connector, but PS2 machines can't understand XT at all, so to get this working you definitely need an active converter. Again, you can either make one or you can buy one commercially. The one I would recommend is made by Ori Alcon. It's expensive, but it translates XT, AT and a whole host of other protocols and it's very well made. A lot of keyboards from the late 80s and early 90s came with a 5-pin DIN plug and had an ATXT switch that allows you to choose between the two, just always pick AT. Terminal keyboards of all varieties tended to have the weirdest connectors and rare proprietary protocols. These are generally the hardest to get working. IBM terminals came with either this RJ45 jack or this 5-pin DIN plug. But note how the pins are at a different angle from AT plugs, so you can't use them. Again, Ori Halcon makes active converters for both types of plugs, so if you want to tinker yourself, you can get one from him. Other terminal keyboards use way different connectors and protocols that you're probably going to have to dig around a lot more to get working. That's it for the main types of connectors. This covers a vast majority of keyboards. Thanks for watching and join me next time when we look at how to clean and maintain mechanical keyboards. Neutralized.